This boat uses three rudders and a single motor to move around. Two rudders are at the rear along with the outboard motor and one is at the front. The drivetrain is geared at a one-to-one -one ratio. The outboard is made up entirely of 3D printed parts with the exception of a wooden dowel being used as the shaft for the propeller. A power draw test on the bench gives us an approximate load of 22.8 watts at half throttle and 50 watts at 100% throttle. Testing the operation of these servo actuated rudders exposes some jittery holding characteristics. This is because of the long flexible moment arm that is the rudder attached to the servo itself. Once in the water and with the load on the rudder, this jittery movement should go away. Here's the first run with the initial configuration. The motor has some difficulty spinning the propeller and there are some cogging issues when initiating rotation, which would indicate the motor doesn't have enough torque to comfortably get things moving from a stop. Keeping the RPMs nice and low draws about 14 watts and provides us a nice, slow, smooth trolling speed. There's a center of gravity issue here where the front of the boat is diving into the water under power, so we can't try increasing the throttle too much just yet. I put this rock in the boat to help adjust the center of gravity. This way the front of the boat will lift out of the water when under power. You can hear the motor cogging even more with the extra load of the rock. Having a better CG lets us push the motor a little more and we're getting a comfortable 32 watts up until the load becomes too much and the motor quits. This is a good indication that the propeller is too large and aggressive for this powertrain, so we need to make a new one. But first, let's see what happens when we really try to push the setup. We pulled nearly 100 watts on that run, which is pretty cool. Here's a redesigned propeller. I reduced the overall diameter by 40% and eliminated one of the fins. On the first run, the motor is noticeably more peppy and has an easier time starting from stop. Trolling speed operates at about 14 watts, which is very similar to the first propeller. Once we start to open up the throttle, it becomes a completely different craft, however. Acceleration and top speed have massively increased. We can easily handle 62 watts, which is nearly double what we were able to do with the first propeller. The motor cogging issues all but went away, but I did notice the temperature of the motor was getting a little toasty, so let's try to make an even smaller propeller. This is the third propeller design. I kept the same pitch and diameter as the second one, but eliminated yet another fin. Without a doubt, this is the best propeller design for this motor so far. The motor has virtually no cogging and is very peppy under acceleration. The boat does feel a little bit slower than with the second propeller, but the motor doesn't have to struggle at all to operate this time. Under heavy load, we are pulling around 55 watts, which is less than the other propellers as well. Removing the camera and adjusting the CG with a rock demonstrates the full potential of this setup. The power delivery is smooth and the handling is sharp. It's a lot of fun to cruise around with. Just for fun, I wanted to make an even smaller propeller to see what would happen. This time I reduced the pitch by half and reduced the diameter by a little bit as well. When installed on the boat, it looks like it's too small to work, but let's find out how it performs in the water. The results are disappointing to say the least. There's no discernible thrust produced with this propeller. All it does was make the boat yaw along its axes. It's the only propeller that was able to run at 100% throttle so far and pulled about 64 watts at peak load. It might make a good blade for a blender, but a propulsion device it is not. With all the prop testing out of the way and the satisfactory design in place, we can test out the turning characteristics of the three rudder setup. Since each rudder is independently controlled via the transmitter, we can set them up however we want to. The first test will be the control. Here we have operation of all three rudders. The turning radius is very small and all maneuvers are sharp and accurate. The second test disables the front rudder and relies on the two rear rudders to maneuver. The turning radius is substantially larger than the control setting and the maneuvers feel drifty and loose. The final test will disable the rear two rudders and try to operate off of the front rudder only. The turning radius is better than running just the rear rudders and the maneuvering feels much more sharp and less drifty. It's not as precise as when all three rudders are activated, but it's really not too bad. 
The best performance was with all three rudders, followed by just running the front rudders only, and in last place would have to be just running the two rear rudders. Overall, this was a fun project to do. It would be nice to make a custom hole to replace the square foam piece with and really try to dial in some performance with this motor. But even in its current state, this thing is a blast to play with.